Welcome to sections 3.1 and 3.3. So gentle people, in the last lecture we talked about Avogadro's number or how a mole is defined. And we told you guys how a mole is, so let's go ahead and talk about something called molar mass. Molar mass is the quantity in grams numerically equal to its atomic weight or formula weight. So let's go ahead and take this apart and we'll, and we'll start out with that antiquated definition of a mole. So I told you the mole used to be based off of carbon-12. Even though it was redefined, this next statement still holds true. If I take one mole of carbon-12, it's going to weigh about 12 grams. Now you guys can remember how we define the atomic mass unit. And we said that carbon-12 equals 12 AMU, or 12 atomic mass units. Now, I can play the same game with magnesium-24. Magnesium-24 weighs about 24 atomic mass units, and if I were to take one mole of magnesium-24, it would weigh 24 grams. Now, what you guys can do is you can set up a relationship. What we see is that 12 AMU is equivalent to 12 grams, which is given in one mole. And so this is for carbon. Now, if I go ahead and do this, I'll get that one atomic mass unit equals a gram per mole. And this is a very important relationship. So what I want you guys to understand is that if you go into the laboratory, there's nothing in there that is a molometer. There's nothing that can count atoms for you because counting atoms would take a supremely long time. Just imagine if you had to count one mole of thing. You would have to count up to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. You wouldn't be able to do that in your lifetime. But what you do find in your lab is something that measures mass. So if you go to the lab, you can get a balance and it can measure grams. If you know the grams per mole, or the moles per gram, what you can do is you can convert from grams to moles. In this case, what you can do is you can put the number of grams on the bottoms per one mole, and you can cross out grams, and then from the balance, you'll be able to count the number of particles in your sample. Now, if you were to do a theoretical calculation, you can go the other way. You you can times it by the grams over the moles, and then you will go ahead and get the grams out of here. Now this grams per mole relationship is called the molar mass. So the official abbreviation is this italicized M, but this gets confused with another abbreviation we're gonna use in chemistry. So a lot of the times you will see this as molar mass, or sometimes I will abbreviate it as FW for formula weight. But let's take a look at this last line here. What you'll note is that instead of having magnesium 24, I'm just gonna have a sample of magnesium. Now what you'll note is that sample of magnesium has a molar mass of 24.3 grams per mole. This is a number that you'll find on the periodic table. So the first question you have is how did they calculate this number and what is this number? So on the periodic table, what you guys will see along with the atomic number is something called the atomic weight. What the atomic weight does, it takes into account the various number of types of atoms we have for a particular element. So here's what I mean by that. If I go out on planet Earth, I can find a sample of carbon. Now carbon, can be carbon-12, 13, or carbon-14, and these are the common versions of carbon that I will find on planet Earth. Now, what you will note is that all of these carbons have the same number of protons, because protons define the atom. They have the same number of electrons, because they are neutral atoms, but the only thing that differs is the number of neutrons. And so if I have something that differs in neutrons, we call that a different isotope. So carbon-12 is one isotope, carbon-13 is another isotope, and carbon-14 is the last isotope that I want to discuss here. What you'll note is that each one of these isotopes come in varying amounts, or their abundance can differ. It turns out that 98.89% of carbon around Earth 
is going to be carbon-12. About 1% is carbon-13, and carbon-14 isn't terribly stable, so you're not going to find too much inside a normal sample. And for now, we're going to call this a negligible amount. Now, carbon-12 is going to weigh about 12 AMU, and carbon-13 is about 13.0034 AMU. So what we can do to get the atomic weight is we have to take into account the abundance. And so I'm going to go ahead and follow this formula. I'm going to take the abundance of a particular isotope and it times it by its atomic mass. I'm going to take the second isotope's abundance and I'm going to go ahead and times it by its atomic mass. I'm going to do this for the most abundant isotopes found on planet Earth. So for carbon, you guys can see I take that 98.89%, turn it into a decimal, and then I have its atomic weight. I take the 1% that I have for carbon-13, and then I take its atomic weight, and then I go ahead and do this calculation, and this number is the number that appears on the periodic table. So the periodic table has the atomic weight, which is based on the isotopic abundance of each isotope of that particular element. So now that we've discussed atomic weight, let's talk about formula weight or molar mass. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go ahead and talk about chemical compounds. Now chemical compounds are going to be made from more than one atom. So in this case, let's talk about H2SO4. So if I want to know what the weight or the grams per mole of H2SO4 is, well, I'm going to do the logical thing and sum up its parts and say that that is going to equal the whole. For example, let's say you're going to build a new bike off of Amazon. You're going to get all the parts shipped to you. But every time you make a purchase, it tells you how much each one of those parts weigh. Well, what you can do is you can take all the weights of your parts, sum them up, and that's going to be the weight of your bike. So for H2SO4, what I know is that there are two hydrogens. So I'm going to take two times its atomic weight. It has only one sulfur. So I'm just going to add the atomic weight of sulfur. And it has four oxygens. And so I'm going to look on the periodic table for the atomic weight of oxygen and times it by four. If I add that all up together, I get 98.1 atomic mass units. But what we've already established is that an atomic mass unit, and so what I can do is I can change this into 98.1 grams per mole. So this is the molar mass or the formula weight for H2SO4. And with this, now I can go into the laboratory, I can go ahead and put my sample of H2SO4 in the balance, and then I can go ahead and calculate moles. Or if I have a reaction and I'm able to get the theoretical amount of moles I should generate, then what I can do is see if I can match the grams to that experiment. Well, I hope that made sense, Chem1A, and remember to stay safe.